So we talked about you don't want your child to end up with a situation someday where they're going to need, you know, to go through the substance treatment. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things, um, first of all, protective measures that you can put in place um, that might, aside from having these conversations, that might help right. your child avoid getting sucked into this? Right. So when we talk about risk and protective factors, we look at all the ways that kids are influenced. So we know that school is a big influence on, on kids, their family is a big influence, the community is a big influence, and their, their, their own self and their peer group is a big influence. So within each one of those areas, there are protective factors that kind of help keep kids safe and help um, help them to make the best choices to kind of get through those teen years around substance use and there are factors risk factors that make it more likely that they're going to engage in problem behavior so when we want to protect kids in our family we want um, really strong clear boundaries we want parents who have good relationships and open relationships with their kids and kids who really feel like they are part of their family they really feel bonded with their parents or caregivers um, as far as protective factors go in school and community, we want to reward kids for who are making good choices and doing good things, and we want to give them lots of opportunities um, to participate in activities, whether that's sports or music or theater or science, you know, whatever their interest is, we want them to have the opportunities um, to participate, but also really good programming where they can build skills and then get recognition for doing a, a job well done. Um, and then within their peer group and their, their own kind of resilience, Resiliency. We want to have kids who are resilient, who can um, make decisions on their own and weather times that are hard um, and learn how to cope in a positive way. Um, so instead of you know turning to drugs and alcohol as a coping mechanism, we want kids who can make healthy choices, whether that is exercise or breathing or meditation, whatever that, that would be to get them through. Um, and then spending time with friends who are making good decisions as well. So we want those positive kind of protective um, factors around our kids because it'll be more likely that they'll they'll make good choices. What about the notion? I mean, everybody's doing it. Does right. that does that hold true? It really doesn't. And when we do look at our data, um, most kids aren't. They really aren't. Um, so that's a really important take home for parents. And it's that's a great thing for parents to say to kids. You know, most kids don't do this. They really don't. Um, so don't feel like you need to do this to fit in because in reality, most kids aren't. What are some risk factors that you should be watching out for with your child? Sure. So um, there's risk factors in each of the domains that we talked about. Um, so risk factors are factors that make it more likely that kids will engage in problem behavior. So um, when kids have low commitment to school, for example, in, in the school domain, or when families have a positive attitude towards using drugs and alcohol or parents allow kids to use drugs and alcohol, it's more likely that kids will use. Um, when communities have laws or traditions around drinking, it's more likely that there'll be underage drinking or drinking behavior from young people in the community. So they're really those things that make it more likely that kids are going to engage in problem behavior. What are some risk factors that you should be watching out for with your child? Sure. So um, there's risk factors in each of the domains that we talked about. Um, so risk factors are factors that make it more likely that kids will engage in problem behavior. So um, when kids have low commitment to school, for example, in, in the school domain, or when families have a positive attitude towards using drugs and alcohol or parents allow kids to use drugs and alcohol, it's more likely that kids will use. Um, when communities have laws or traditions around drinking, it's more likely that there'll be underage drinking or drinking behavior from young people in the community. So they're really those things that make it more likely that kids are going to engage in problem behavior.